You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to build your very own capacitor. Okay, so before we get started, let's go ahead and learn the basics of a capacitor. Now, I plan to make a video in the future explaining the theory behind how capacitors work, so for this video I won't be going super into depth on that, but I'm just going to be showing you a few equations that I'll be referencing throughout the video. If we want to know the energy in joules a capacitor has stored up, we can go ahead and use this equation. Energy is equal to one half the capacitance times the voltage squared, and that's going to be the energy in joules. And just so you know, joules equals power times time. And using this formula, we can calculate the capacitance. Capacitance is equal to about 8.85 times 10 to the negative 14. And that's going to be multiplied by the dielectric constant, which is given by this symbol right here. We're going to times that by the plate area in centimeters, divided by the plate spacing. As you can see, I've cut out two identical rectangles out of aluminum foil. These are going to be the two plates we're going to be using for our capacitor. The diameter for these are about 15.45 centimeters by about 25.6 centimeters. So I ran through our calculations from before, and knowing that the plastic I'm going to be using is a stuff called cellulose acetate, the dielectric constant should be around 4.57. So plugging all this in gives us a value of about 5.332 times 10 to the negative 9th farads. This may seem like only a little bit, however it's important to remember that a microfarad is already times 10 to the negative 8th. So this is actually going to be about 5.33 nanofarads. Now this number may be wrong because when I looked up the dielectric constant it was anywhere from a range and so I just chose this as the middle. Alright, so now I'm going to take one of these clear cellulose acetate plastic sheets. This is just one of those transparent sheets that you'd use for a projector. And I'm going to place it down. Now I'm going to lay one of my plates of aluminum foil on top of this. And I'm going to tape down all of the corners. Now I'm going to take a wire just like this, and I'm going to tape it into contact with one of the corners of the foil. Now take another sheet and set it on top of that. Take a credit card or something you have lying around, and use it to smooth out the foil underneath. Now depending on how many sheets you add on top of this before putting on the next plate will determine the voltage rating of your capacitor. For me I'm just going to add on these two sheets atop of this. Referencing back to the formula before, although adding more of this will raise the voltage level, it will also lower the capacitance. Now go ahead and take your other plate and place it as close as you can to overlapping the previous foil plate. And make sure that you have all the corners taped down. Now take another wire and tape it into contact with the foil. Be sure that it's on the opposite corner from the last one you did. Now I'm going to take another sheet and place it on top to finish it off. And go ahead and flatten it out as best you can again. Now that we have all that done, you should have something that looks somewhat like this. Go ahead and tap it down to make sure all the corners are lined up and give it a tight roll. When you're done rolling it, go ahead and add some tape to make sure it doesn't unravel. Like that. You should end up with something just like this. As you can see, we're getting about 4.9 nanofarads. I assume this differential from my calculated value is from two things. One, the electric constant must have been a little bit off, and second, my two aluminum plates aren't as well aligned as I could have made it, and that would increase the capacitance. So, now that we know the capacitance, let's go ahead and write it down onto the tube here. Now, I couldn't find the exact breakdown voltage of this kind of plastic, however, I estimate it to be thousands of volts. So to prove that, let's go ahead and test it out using one of my high voltage power supplies. I built this high voltage power supply in a previous video. And so, as you can see when I flip it on, it'll generate from about there of high voltage. This capacitor will work on DC or AC, and so polarity won't really matter. Put on safety goggles and thick rubber gloves. Okay, so now with everything hooked up, let's go ahead and flip it on. That wasn't the capacitor blowing, that was actually it jumping across. As you can hear, the capacitor is charged up. So let's go ahead and separate the wires up here a little bit more and test again. Okay, I'd be very surprised if it can jump that. So let's go ahead and flip it on to charge it up. And the capacitor is charged, so carefully discharge it. And now the capacitor is safe to handle. So now you know how to make your very own high voltage capacitors. Remember guys, these can be very dangerous, and if you connect enough of these in parallel and series, you can store quite a bit of joules up. We'll be using some of these high voltage capacitors in future projects, and so I wanted to make a video showing you guys how to build them. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up, and if you'd like to get our weekly videos, such as this one in your subscription newsfeed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below, be safe, and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to build your very own plasma speaker.